Hey guys, this is Kerry Hawkins, and this is a vector made tutorial. Um, this isn't actually uh, part of vector graphics. Um, this is going to be dealing with raster graphics today, but I do that as well. Um, and anybody in the industry will have to deal with images from time to time. And you don't usually want to do a vector uh, graphic of something that's this highly detailed and realistic. You know, you want to keep it photorealistic. So. Um, anyway, I was just wanted to show kind of some different tools and ways to cut out the background um, and pull just, you know, like a character or an object and use that. So I got this picture of Wonder Woman because it's kind of an interesting picture. It's got a lot of light places here and high contrast and some darker areas here where, you know, the contrast isn't quite as good. And um, and then she's got a lot of hair and wispiness and such, so you can kind of see the resolution of it. Um, it's about a medium resolution image, which is probably what most of them are uh, that you deal with when you pull them off the internet. Um, so I kind of wanted to show you the um, magic wand tool first, and that's over here. You can hit W, um, pull it up. It should look like this. This will usually have, I think the default settings 32 on the tolerance up here. Tolerance can go from 0 to 255 um, and that just means when you click on an area um, how similar to that color area is it going to be. If the, the lower the tolerance uh, the less it's going to select. The higher the tolerance the more it will select. So if we just go with like a 32 and click in this area it should get a decent chunk of this. See? But with this image, and the reason I picked it is because it's got so many little areas where they're like these little specks, you know? And so it doesn't pick those specks up unless we bump this up. Let's try 64, which is double the threshold. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you got a whole lot more, and it ranged much further if it was here to here. Um, now, of course, that's not enough, but what you can easily do uh, when you have something like this um, is you can just kind of hold shift. As you're clicking along, you'll pick up some other colors, and you just kind of do like that. Now, see, this is the problem that I wanted to show you. When you get an image that has lower contrast on an edge, like right here, I'm backing up a step right there, Control-Z to back up. Um, anything I click in over here kind of bleeds into this shield and then starts picking up all sorts of stuff that's similar. Let's see. Okay. If I click there, I'm okay, but if I clicked over here... I picked up a lot of this and I don't want that so um, that would be where you would want to maybe you know get some of this over here um, and then back off your tolerance maybe go back to 32 and then try over here and see how it got a whole lot less each time and didn't go past the shield here now it still got into her skin which we didn't want and it still got all these little dots everywhere and uh, we didn't want those either now what I tend to do is if there's stuff like this, I might grab a marquee tool, maybe rectangle or elliptical uh, a marquee tool. And then again, you're going to hit shift and drag so that you're adding to the selection. Um, and if you want to take away, you can also hit alt and drag and that'll take away. So shift, click, drag, adds, sh uh, alt, click, drag, takes away. See? So, um, anyway, you can do that, kind of go around the edges a little bit. Obviously, once you get closer to the object, if it's got curves and stuff like this, you're going to want to use some other kind of tool. I would recommend using uh, the lasso tool and probably go with the polygonal lasso tool because that is the easiest one to use. Um, you don't have to have a steady hand. All you would do here, again, hold shift to add to the selection and then just start making a path and every time you click you're just making a point for that new selection that you're adding so we'll just go here and then we'll end back there also cool tip whenever you're doing these um, polygonal lasso tools is you can um, when you get to the end of where you your selection is if you're done you can just double click and it will finish that path out for you it's really nice but it's also frustrating if um, let's say for instance uh, you are wanting to you know take out this section above her head the one I've already taken out let's just say we're gonna do that 
and I got here and I accidentally double clicked, boom, I chopped, I chopped off her face. Uh, so just make sure that you don't go too quickly when you're using this tool. You just kind of want to click, 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 click. Uh, many times, though, I will double click on accident and do what you just saw where I cut stuff up. So just have patience. <laughs> have more patience than me. Um, the other thing, let's see, I wanted to show you the magnetic lasso tool, which sometimes has decent use and other times it's just not worth anything. Um, let me let me show you kind of what it does. I'm going to deselect everything here, um, back up a little bit. So we currently have nothing selected, okay? And if I come on onto this edge, I'd want to you know follow along her arm here. And the magnetic lasso tool is supposed to kind of do that. Well, it's okay, and I'll show you what it kind of does. You start here, and then you start going up, and it's it's kind of not getting the lighter areas down here. Um, you know, it missed that. It did jump into her arm really well, and this part goes great. Now I'm just scrolling up with my mouse, and as I do that, you can see how it screws up. Now if it ever screws up for you like this, you just hit delete, and that will always get rid of the last node that you created. So I'm right here now. And the easy way to fix things whenever it goes off like this, and you're like, no, I don't want to go there, is to get really close to the edge that you want to kind of magnetically attach to. That helps it out a lot. But if we do that, we'll come down here real quick and kind of just show you that was the selection it made. It missed some of the lighter parts, the reflection on her gauntlets, and it did all right in the skin. The skin to the background, that contrast was good enough that it did really well. Um, but overall, it's not a it's not a great tool most of the time, um, just because of the contrast issues. Like you, you'll probably see here if I go along the shield, I actually did pretty decent. Again, you got a little bit here where it just wants to go into the it wants to go into the background and that's really hard to control even if you have a pretty steady hand so the other one you can use is the lasso tool but this is the this is really tough if you just use the regular lasso tool it's really tough to stay steady I, I don't have that kind of a steady hand and so every time you do it you're gonna get a slightly different result the only time I think this is really helpful is when you have hair and when we get done, like, we don't really care if this is perfect because it's hair and it's going to be wispy looking. So, like, a lot of times I'll just kind of, you know, grab some of this and just sort of do that. And um, I'm okay with that look a lot of the time uh, because of what we'll do later. And you'll see it doesn't have to be perfectly selected in order for it to, to look good uh, with the tools that we're going to use later. So, anyway, um, let me see if I can pull up. Okay, so here I have gone through and used all those tools to select all the area. Um, again, lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool, use a little bit magnetic, um, and then use the magic wand and the marquee tools to get the background. But all I have selected at this point is Wonder Woman herself, and anything I don't want is, uh, is not selected. So when you get to this point and you're, you think you're happy with the selection you've made, you hit Control, Alt, and R to bring up the Refinement uh, Properties um, tab here. And I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And you can see, um, if I, let's put her on red. Let's do this overlay. You can see better. You can see that you know she looks really good where her arms and armor are and the shield. And everything looks pretty good, except the hair is, eh, you know, it's a little bit too just rough as you can see and I, I didn't do like the finest of detail when I was um, making my selections I kinda wanted to get a rough selection of it but I wouldn't want to cut this out this is just really pixelated and, and and too sharp on the edges same over here but what I usually do if I'm happy with the way it looks on the skin and I am I'm pretty happy I might do like a one pixel feather but on this one I'm gonna say no and just take it as it is go ahead and make a selection now if I get rid of this layer Oh, let me back up just so you know what I did. Um, I hit Control J to create a layer from the selection. Okay, Control J after you've got it selected. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my original layer here, 
Um, and I'll go ahead and get rid of the white too, I think for now, just to see the transparent background. And you can see that's what I've got. Same, same thing as we saw before. Um, but that's the only thing that is in layer two here. Um, now what I would do is uh, uh, hover over layer two and then hit control and left click on it. And that will select whatever layer you have. So if I do that on layer one, for instance, it's going to get the entire thing. So this is just a square picture and it's going to give me the bounding box around the edge here, the little marching ants. And that's going to go on the edge of that picture. So that picture is just a, s a rectangle and it gives me a rectangular selection. But I cut out Wonder Woman in this layer. So when I hold down control and click, it gives me her edge, which is exactly what I just cut out. So now we'll go into the refinement again, control alt R and we're already on our overlay setting here under view so we can see what it looks like a little better. Um, and now I'm going to mess with the radius. Uh, I think maybe doing 15 might look good. It would look better on white, wouldn't it? Well, let's try it. We'll try messing with some other things here. Uh, sometimes messing with smooth helps. Sometimes doing a little bit of a feather. You might try like a 1 or a 2. A low feather usually is going to be better. Sometimes upping the contrast helps. I think we'll go lower. Sometimes shifting the edge is going to work too. I'm going to go with that just to see 15 and 2. 15 radius, 2 feather. Let's just see what it looks like. And again, I've already got everything selected the way I wanted, so I'm going to hit Control J to create a layer from selection. Boom. So that's what I've got. Now, if I take this bottom layer of Cut Out Wonder Woman away, you should see a difference. Yes, we do. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in this white layer, and I'm going to paint it. I'll paint it this red. Um, so let's see. Her hair looks a lot better there than it does here. It's got a little bit more of the highlight there, which I like, but on you know looking closely on this second layer, I kind of lose some of the sharpness of it just because it fades a little bit more into the background. And I usually like that look for hair a little bit better. You could go with that, but I usually like this just a little bit better. It's a little softer. I do want to keep some of these highlights though. So what I'll do is I'll just take this file the one underneath that was a little bit sharper on the edge and I will um, delete some of the the edge on that so you know just kinda get your brush uh, eraser tool out and just kinda come in here and, and start chipping away at some of this it's usually all you gotta do is just maybe a little bit I also like to have the hardness on close to zero um, it just gives you a softer delete a softer erase um, and you'll get a, a little bit of a gradient of how, how much you're deleting, how much you're taking away here. Um, so we'll kind of do some of these inner parts here. I might come over here. Oh, that's a little much, I think. Let's do, if you do a really big brush size, you can see how it kind of just takes a little bit of the edge off. And then you can come back in and get some finer detail. And all I'm doing to increase and decrease the size of the brush is the left and right brackets right bracket bigger, left bracket smaller. So that's all I'm doing there. So I kind of like that look. Again, that's what it looks like without the under layer, which looks really good. Here's what it looks like with the first one. Um, and if I take that off, you can see what changes I've made. You can see I've deleted quite a lot there. Um, but I think that looks pretty decent. And so I went ahead and just, I'm, I'll show you what I already did earlier. I uh, took her out and you can see uh, this is kind of what she ended up looking like. And this was a, a, group, uh, a group of two images of her. Again, I did the same sort of thing. I already did this once where that's the first layer I took off or selected and cut out. And then I cut another layer out of that one and created the sort of finer hair layer. And then I've just got the two together in the same group and gave it a drop shadow and then put a you know graphic on it and all that. So... Those are kind of the basics of selection and, and how you can kind of refine things to get things to look a little bit better, a little bit crisper 
whenever you're doing that sort of stuff. So leave, please uh, leave a comment, subscribe, let me know if this was helpful. If there's any questions on this, uh, please leave those in the comments. I'll get back to those. And if you have anything else you'd like to see um, in future videos, let me know that too, and I'll you know try to make something for you. All right, have a good one.